Hello and welcome to the next week of Love Live Wars. So this is the second week here and on the left we have the Nijigaku third years versus the third years for Muse. So for both of these battles we are going to see the teams who both have 0 and 1 record. So Nair team has 1 so someone is bound to win in this battle here. So more or less we have to see who's going to do well this time. Of course there were some interesting performances and some disappointing performances from some members. We'll see if they'll be able to rebound this time. Alright we're in with the Metroid stage here on Brinstorm. We'll have to see how these girls respond. Will we see the usual nose me from last season today? Because last time she got what 4 and 3 pretty good. But we'll have to see how they do. So so far it looks like Emma as well as Kanan have been taking quite a beating here early on as Nichigoku third years are definitely struggling right now as they're getting a beating from Muse third years but looks like Nosumi will not be able to cover making a foolish mistake there giving Nichigoku third actually an advantage now especially in terms of lies as someone died really early on on Muse's team so far here but still nevertheless Nijigaku is still taking quite a beating so you still can take the lead here as they start finishing off Nijigaku pretty soon here as they're starting to get ear to hundreds here. Looks like Nico takes quite a bit of a beating but she will make the recovery. We have Emma who's... well honestly all of Nijigaku is about at 100 now here. While the Muse girls are slightly behind and I guess Nozomi is quite behind because she already died. So Nozomi gets the kill here on Emma as the light is now even out here. And there goes Kanata. So now we just... Oh, so there goes Ellie. So we have lo two lives lost on both sides of on the battle here. With Kanan already having two whole kills here. The whole, all the kills for her team so far. It looks like Kanan will be able to make the recovery here. Ooh, a big monster's hit. Ellie manages to snare most of the opponents here and finishes off Kanan. Now that Nichigaku has one life each. And then we have Niku who's still holding on to her first life here. We'll see how long she's able to hold on to that. She's been taking quite a beating here now. And oh, looks like the big hit missed. But they were able to finish off Nozomi right there. Now Nozomi's on to our final life here. Lives are back to even now. But Niku's going to lose her life at some point here pretty soon. We're making it, she's toast. And there goes Kanata, she is now on her final life here. Looks like we still have a good chance to secure the win here. As Nico is still holding on to her first life somehow. We have Ellie who's gotten two kills here and knows me. Although dying twice, she also got two kills here so she still has a score of a zero. So she's holding her ground and Nico hasn't gotten any kills but she hasn't died either so that's always a good sign. There goes Ellie as she will finish off Emma. Now Emma's on to her final life here. Ellie doing pretty well here. And there goes Nico. She finally loses her first life here. We have five lives on the Muse side and we have four lives on Ichigaku here. Muse definitely has a clear lead here. But if Ichigaku is able to pull some magic here or someone commits suicide, it can definitely get back in this game. We got some big hits. Oh, and there goes Ellie as Kanta was able to finish off Ellie here. Now bringing Muse to four lives as well. And there goes Nozomi getting launched. She is on her final life and she's looking to probably die pretty soon here. But Nico has a life to spare. She chooses to offer it. And there goes Nozomi and she will take Nico's spare life as now the Muse are down to three lives here. And there goes Kanan as she was not able to make the recovery. Now we're all down to the final lives here. No lives to share. If you die, you are gone. And we have Nico at pretty high percentages here, but. Two of Nichigaku are at really high percentages here, so Nichigaku definitely at a disadvantage here. But if they can finish off Nico, they can definitely get a big advantage here and give Nichigaku the advantage here. And overall, pretty close battle here, but Nozomi is pretty low in terms of percentage as she died semi -re recently. And Nozomi will get a kill. And that brings Kana out of the battle here. And oh, Kanata and Emma die basically at the same time here. And all of Nijigaku falls apart in the last few seconds. And Muse takes the win. So Muse will move for third years will move to one and one while Nijigaku third years will be zero and two here. Kanata not performing well here as uh, she only got one kill. We got Kanata got two and then we got Emma got three, so Emma being the best on her team.
Nico just just died, which was unfortunate. But notice me again going four and three here. Already a lot better than her last year, which rare average she big, she got less than half the kills as she died in the whole season. This has only been two weeks so far for her, but still pretty good here. When now she's at eight at six. And of course, LA did the best here with five and two. A very very impressive record here, which of course she carried her team to victory here while Nico was kind of slacking here. But knows me, the honestly probably the most important member here is she gave out bonkers damage here, getting five hundred forty one percent. That is incredible, and taking solo damage, just obviously the most important player here. And well, we see Cotton here, she gave the most percentage up for her team, and didn't take that much damage either, so her percentage given was pretty good for a team, although Emma is the one who was able to get a few more kills here. Cotton does obviously, it was slacking here, she was falling asleep in the battle here, so she was unable to carry her team to victory here. Overall, good win for Muse, even though it was kind of close for most of the, the battle here. Welcome to the second battle of week two here. On the left, we have Aqua third years, and on the right, we have Arise. Aqua for the third years currently has a record of 1 0, while Arise is at a record of 0 and 1. Arise is still continuing their lose streak from last season, where they won four in a row and then they lost every battle after that, which would put them at Seven losses in a row so far here. Will they make it eight? Who knows? But we'll have to see. We'll see if the third years will be able to make a difference here. All right, we are in Star Fox as Mari opted to buy a spaceship so she can have a battle in space because that's what you do with your money when you're that rich here. Of course, the background's gotta be shiny as well. Wow, nice kill by Mari as she was able to ruined super sub but unfortunately she was not able to cover as well so I guess in the end it was just traded lives but still a pretty impressive kill by Mati here a lot of people are fighting over that ledge to the right here trying to be see if they can punish someone and they do finish off Kana here she's not able to make the recovery and there goes Mati as she is not able to make the recovery too as they are, they're getting pretty going pretty crazy with that, that ledge over there as they are working really hard to try to punch someone so they can't make the recovery. But it looks like only Mani has been the one who's been punished a lot trying to do that. So right now Aqua third years are definitely struggling here as now they already lost three lives compared to the one single life that Arais has lost here. So Aqua is in a it's very deep trouble right now. And they're looking to have die lose a life soon here. She now she's at 110 and she is way too far to make that recovery. She finally goes down. As everyone on Aqua has lost a life while Ms. Anju, who has gotten three kills already, hasn't lost a life and she's only at 45%, just absolutely destroying this battle as it looks like Adice is very determined to end their losing streak here. I didn't know finally falls for Adice is now they're down to And she goes and dies again because she decides to not grab a ledge and die instantly. So that's uh questionable decision by that but still Aqua's in a really deep deep hole here even that's not gonna save him at this point here as Mari looks like she's gonna lose her final life here pretty soon I'm down to her final life as well and Dai only has one life to spare well Anju is still on her first life here but she's finally at a hundred percent now and Mari gets launched but of course she got launched the wrong way so she will definitely survive that Ooh, and no, looks like Mari should be able to cover. And Mari does recover. And so then we have Anju who's still doing all right here. Looks like I'm gonna make the recoveries from all those attacks on the left there. Although uh, people are starting to get really launched here, and Anju can only stay alive for so much longer here as she is getting comboed here. They have a lot of people edge guarding there, and there goes Mari as she finally loses her final life and we'll see a life from Daya. Daya does have no lives to spare. Anju finally loses her first life here, but it's two lives versus. Oh jeez, five lives here. And there goes Kanan. It's. And there goes Subasa. So now we have one life to four lives here. It, Mari cannot beat this here. Even though Mari died the most on her team, she actually has kills, unlike her teammates here. 
I don't think Daddy got a single kill and Kanan got one kill while well, Madi's gotten three kills so far here but she's not gonna be able to fight a 3v1 here there's just no chance she has no way to counter these many fighters as well with bonus a bonus life to spare even so unfortunate for the third years Fakuas they will go to 101 as the guys will finally end their incredible losing streak of seven and move to one and one if you know the loose tree can kind of from last season. And it super says she just finds a ways to die here. And she'll steal a life from Anju. I guess might as well. Despite her awful play here. And there goes Mari, she finally goes down. And of course we as we expect that eyes will win here. So Supercell just straight up died three times here. Not very good. Die also just died two times here. Also not very good here. And we have Edina who went four and two. Of course one suicide, which was really, really dumb. It, it, she just jumped off the ledge and decided not to recover. But it still counts as a death here. So four and two for her. You know, she pretty much went four and one. And then we have Anju, of course, doing the best here with 5 and 1 here for Odai's carrying the whole battle here. Kanan did not do so well here, but Mani did alright despite dying 4 times here. She did get 4 kills, so she did make up for her high amount of deaths. But of course, that still wasn't enough to make a difference here. If we look at the damage percentage here, it's Kanan who definitely did awful here. Took a lot of damage, did not deal that damage back here. But overall, all, all of Aquas was just doing pretty poorly here, while all of Odai's was just really taking it to her opponents. Of course, Anju doing probably the best here, but I know did a lot of work here as, as well. Susa, despite, you know, just dying here, she did more damage than she took, but she was not able to get any kills here. So, it's not as bad as it looks, but geez, <laughs> Supusa was not doing much here. But well, congrats to the guys for finally ending their losing streak. Welcome to the third battle of week two. Here on the left we have the first years for Muse and on the right we have the second years for Aquas. So of course we have a record of 1-0 for the first years on Muse and for the Aqua girls we have a record of 0 and 1. We'll have to see how that changes today. Alright we're gonna be on the Animal Crossing stage here. We'll have to see how these girls perform. Erlan, Muse first years have taken huge beating on here so far. Well, a lot of Aquas is not taken damage yet. And now we start to see a little damage being shelled out to the Aqua girls here so far. Of course, Muse is still definitely taking quite a beating here. Hanu taking a big shot from the lasers. And then she gets a big shot off, but it, there wasn't anyone high percentage, so it's just a lot of damage without getting a big of a launch factor there. And looks like Hunter was able to make their cover here. And we have our first death as well actually first two deaths here as Hanyo and Maki both die there. Now giving a big lead to the second use for Aquas. And it looks like Chica will not be able to make the cover here. Chica still has two kills here though. And there goes Yo who finally gets her first kill. As Rin goes down, and now the first year for Muse is definitely falling behind as they all have lost a life so far. So far, here we still have only lost one life for Aquaz. Compared to the two lives lost for Muse here, but we have Yo at a really high percentage here, and we also got Rico at a pretty high percentage here. There goes Chica, she decides that she needs to die pretty early on here, and Yo will not be able to make the cover here, as now we have six lives for Aquas, except there goes Rico, so now we have five for Aquas girls here, versus the six lives Muse still has here. Well, of course, the percentage is much higher on the Muse girls here, so we'll have to see if they'll be able to hold on for a little longer before they start losing all their lives. Try to even out the percentage here if they want to stay in this game. Maki gets launched, but she looks like she'll be able to stay alive here. We got a big head uh, run onto Chika as she's starting to really build up percentage on all its life. So she likely will need to steal life from one of her allies. 
in a little while here, maybe in a minute. We have Maki at a 160% here now. And she barely makes recovery here once again. And her teammates both are at 100% here. And it goes Chika, but it goes uh, Maki. And then Riku finally goes down. And I would say Yo could give up her last life. There she goes. Or her last extra life. My bad. As now all of Aquas is still back up. But they are down to their final lives each. Well, Muse has one life to spare with Rin here. But she's at a really high percentage, so she's probably going to need it soon. It looks like Yo will not be able to recover because she got tot stooled and pushed off to a point where she can no not be able to recover. And it looks like the first use for Muse have this in the bag here. They did finish off Rin though. So now it's three lives on two lives here. And it's the life advantage gets a little bit more even here. But Chica's at a really high percentage here. They really need to finish off Maki if they want a chance at victory here. But I don't think they're able to accomplish that with uneven numbers here. Hanem's got a big shot ready and charged. Let's see if she's able to get that off on her opponents or not. And there goes Chica. She finally falls. And now it's just Rico here. So Rico tries to fight a 3v1 here. Maki tries to go for a hit but misses. And Riku gets a massive hand on Maki, but she's not able to finish off Maki here. And Riku is, is desperately trying to fight off so many people here. Riku gets another big hit here, but not enough to finish off Riku. There's an explosive that all of Muse was foolish enough to go into. Riku gets a kill on Maki though, but then she dies right afterwards. So that will end the battle as the first year for Muse plans victory here. Overall, a pretty even game by most people here. Of course, we had Chika who t had the most deaths here, but she still got three kills, so she's not that much below being average here. We had Rin and Hanyo, the Rin and Pana mix here, going for six and four here, doing a little bit more work than Maki was able to do here. So let's take a look at the percentages here. As Yo got two and two, which is still pretty good. The damage given, so it looks like it was a Maki, Definitely did not do her fair share of work here to getting kills here as she took a lot of damage But she was able to stay alive for a really long time So that's I mean props to her, but her damage output was definitely not that good in terms of biggest differential um, I, I would think Hanyu is slightly more than some other ones We still had a pretty good performance by Yo as well as Rico here and Chica was just under giving about equal for damage given and taken here and we have Rin who did a little bit more here but of course Maki was not doing the best here in terms of giving out damage to our opponents but in the end they still win so that's all that matters so congratulations to the first years as now they will move to 2 and 0 while the second years Rockwells will move to 0 and 2 welcome to the fourth battle of six in week two here on the left we have the second years for Nijigaku and on the right we have the first years for Niji Gaku. So, the battle of the Nichigaku, it is. So, the second years have a 1 and 0 record, while the first years have a 0 and 1 record. We'll see who gets to move to 2 and 0 or 1 and 1 each. Alright, we're on what? Pikmin, I believe. So, we gotta be careful with the stage as a lot of the uh, brawlers tend to commit suicide and on these ledges as uh anyways that's the saying Setsuna who just did that and so did Cosme as they tend to really underestimate how little of a recovery they have here and they am dying because they can't recover well enough here as they love to edge guard a lot so expect <laughs> even more suicides we had two early ones ready here and there goes Setsuna there goes Ayumu with their stupidity and there goes Kasumi as she commits suicide too. My goodness. This AI. It's so bad. Maybe I should start banning these stages so we don't have to deal with them committing suicide too much here. <laughs> I'm getting sick and tired of them committing suicide. I mean, they'll do it on any st stage to be honest. And there goes Kasumi as she already lost three lives here. She gets an okay spike here, but it was definitely not enough. There goes Ayumu! Wait, I mean, none of these deaths are honestly caused by the opponents. It's just fierce stupidity here. It's all dying early here. Still waiting for my the first legitimate kill here. I 
I could probably just make it just a Mega Stages here, because our Battlefield Stages. Because these girls really like this center hole here, and they just keep dying. Oh, look! Okay, so that's the first legitimate death there. As I was able to get killed here, we have four lives on four lives here, but honestly, it's just who's going to commit suicide less here. Now we got three lives for the second years, four lives for the first years, and it's just... It's just insane when I'm wa I'm watching here. It's all these suicides. We have uh, three lives on two lives here. Uh, all the deaths are just like in the in the middle here, as people just fail to recover. It's just silly. And it looks like she's gonna be able to recover from that toll tool, but just barely. Oh, if she didn't have the recovery tool, she would have been toast here. And there goes I, and that will be it for the second years of Nijigaku. And sets out, it's desperately trying to recover there, but she she is able to sur survive here. But in the end, she's just going to get beaten up by the three opponents here. And that will finish her off, as we have great performances by basically, I guess not brawlers here. Because the brawlers just don't understand this map here, and keep killing themselves here. Now, obviously, most of them won't see as suicides because generally they took the after four to go and kill themselves, so that will be credited as a kill. But even Kazumi managed to find a way to get herself killed without taking damage. So she's gonna didn't end up dying here, and she was able to get three kills here. But I mean, honestly, it it it's yeah, it's just a bad battle. Just I don't know what to say. People just kept killing themselves. That, that's basically on this battle, to be honest. I guess congratulations to Rina on capitalizing that and Shizuku as well. I did alright here, but all the brawls just decided suicide was the answer. I'll, I'll probably adjust the settings this time because I'm sick and tired of watching this happen. Welcome to the second last battle for this week here. Here on the left, we have the first years for Akawas, which currently have a record of 1 0. And on the right, we have Yuga Oka, the new Project Girls, which currently have a record 0 1. This is the first grouping of them. The one where Ren is, or Kanon, she is on the second team, which I'll be participating in. You'll see in the next battle. We have not Kuk Keke, but Kuku, I guess is how you say, Lostreet Sato, and Sumire. So these girls are, of course, participating in this battle. So let's see how they do this time. As they got, got destroyed by my team, and that was not because of me. Oh, and if you're wondering what I decided to do about changes, I decided just to ban that map from the rotation. Because that map just doesn't. It's a lot of suicides here. And yes, there are a few maps, but um, I don't want to only make it just the Battlefield or Mega versions, because it kind of feels. It doesn't feel as fun here, and that's part of this. It's, it's just for fun. But. I, if, if the map gets too crazy with suicides, I will ban it. So I'll have to see about the other ones for now, later. But so far, I just removed that one. So we won't be seeing that one anymore. Here early on, we have Kuku getting pretty beat up here. And she's got 130% here. But we have Chisato who's pretty low percentage here. And then it goes Kuku as she finally gets her first death super early on here to be honest but I mean, actually have Hanamaru who's only at 20% here so she's doing a pretty good job of avoiding a lot of damage here we have Yoshiko and our fallen our little demons here doing some damage here and wow a massive massive hit on Sumire but she does not get finished off she got launched the wrong way so she barely barely lives especially because this is a large map in terms of the uh, boxes for where you die. There goes Chisato as now the Yuigaoko girls have lost two lives so far here. And now we have Yoshiko finally falling here. And then there goes Ruby as Ruby has lost her first life here. Hanuma is still holding on to her first life as so well as Sumire, but she's at a really high percentage. Unlike Hanuma, who's still only at 45% here somehow, using her. Zidamaru magic and she's able to avoid a lot of damage here and shell a lot 
She's she's just feeding on her opponents right now. Well, she's got two kills here and has not died once. But now we have Kuka at 100% here, which is really, really high. Sorry, or not that high yet, but it's getting into the unsafe area where she could start taking quite a beating and a strong hit could finish her off if things go wrong for her. And there it goes, she goes down. Now for the Yuigaoka girls, they are down to 5 lives here compared to the 6 lives for the Aqua first years. Ruby's down to her last life as well as she's been doing the poor so far. There goes Chisato, she goes down to her final life here. And there goes Yoshiko who falls her and just falls. Like she didn't even make an attempt at recovery, she just dove and died. So uh, that's not the best strategy there. So now we have, oh looks like Hanuman finally lost her first life here. As now feel she's at just two lives here. And there goes Ruby as she loses her life. She'll steal a life from her friend Hanamaru. So now we have three lives left for Aqua First Years versus the Yuigaoka girls who still have four lives here. But of course, Kuka is getting pretty high here. So is Sumira. And there goes Sumira. She lost her spare life. Now it's three lives and three lives here. But Kisato and Kuka are really high percentage here. Sumira is doing her best to try to carry her team here as she's gotten, looks like, uh, three kills here. And Kuka's gotten uh, two kills so far, and she's also got what one looks like. But yes, uh, Chisato and Kuka can go out any moment here, and incredible! Oh my God, what just happened? Uh, I was just about to say I think Akos had this in the bag, but. Uh, I guess all of the girls just died instantly. Uh, yikes. That that was insane here. Uh, so I guess congratulations. As I think, what? Kuka literally got all three of those kills? Uh, at the end, it must have been. Because she just jumped to 5 and 2 here with, of course, the play of the game. Just nuking the whole opponent team here and just ending the battle right there. Wow, um, assuming they're doing also pretty well here with 3 and 2 here, and Chisato not doing so well. Of course, the worst team member here was Ruby. She's gone 1 and 4, not very good. Yoshiko did alright here with 2 and 3, and Hanamaru doing a little bit better here with 3 and 2 as well. Let's take a look at the damage given out here, and yes, if we look deeper into this, it's definitely Ruby is the reason why Aqua's lost here. Hanamaru doing very well though. She's she did, did, did almost the most here. Um, I guess a little bit technically less than Chisato, who was unfortunately able not to get a whole lot of kills here, but she dealt a lot of damage and she was able to do pretty well here. Um, Kuka just got lucky with one big hit, but she was just taking a beating for most of this, uh, this battle here. We still had uh, uh, Yohane doing pretty well here. She was a little bit under damage given and taken here, but compared to Ruby, ugh. A lot, lot better. Well, congratulations to the Uigaka girls, group number one, as they managed to get their first victory. And well done, Kuka. Well played. Welcome to the final battle of week two. Here on the left, we have the Uigaka girls, group two, which of course I'll be playing with them since there's only five of them. I'll be number six. So I'll be in there. Hopefully, I get carried. We currently have a record of one and zero. We'll see if we maybe I'll make that two and zero. And of course, on the right we have the Muse second years who also have a one and zero record. Someone's gonna move to one and one. Someone's gonna move to two and zero. Someone's gonna be two and zero. Who knows? But this is actually the only battle between one and zero teams here. So let's see how it goes. All right, we're on a persona stage here. Let's see how awful I'm at this game. And I already took a hit there. Ouch. Take that quickly. Ouch. Ow. Oh my goodness. Oh. Yikes. Uh, I screwed up there. Okay, I don't even know my moveset here. I got a big hit. Sweet. Ouch. 
Dang it, I missed. Ow. Is that Honoka? Of course it's Honoka. She's already <laughs> lost all her lives somehow. <laughs> Alright, out. Honoka, not, not cool. Ow. Oh, come on. That's not cool, Honoka. Let's see if you can do that to me. Oh. I keep running into tornadoes. Oh my goodness. Okay. Ow! Yikes, from behind here. Is that Honoka? Yeah, okay, thank god. I'm getting carried here. I can't seem to hit anything. Coming to me! Thank you, Umi! Sweet. <laughs> oh jeez. I didn't do much here. Okay. Once again I get carried because I don't know how to play this game. Congratulations to my team, I guess, the Yuigaku Girls Group 2. I'm, I actually got three kills, not bad. Although I died twice, I took quite a beating here, but Kano and Ren once again carrying me here. They just don't know how to die and they, need, they know how to deal damage. Jeez, like, I don't know what's going on here, but I like what I see. And then we have, of course, Honoko who <laughs> went 2 and 5, yikes. She actually registered two of her deaths as suicides. I don't know how many looked like suicides, but she actually took damage and was credited to the kill here. Put dot good Honoka. Don't don't do that. <laughs> not recommended here. And anyway, Umi also not doing very well here, getting zero and two. And Kote, I guess, did the best with one and two. That's not good. This, to be honest here. Let's take a look at the damage differential here. And oh, Honoka actually dealt more damage than he took, but she died a lot. So I guess it doesn't even matter because she committed suicide so many times. But no one on her team did very well in terms of damage differential. Me also, I. I didn't do that great either, but uh, honestly, Ren is just show just showing up here and doing very well. Her dad differential is insane here. My goodness, and Kano did pretty well too. So I was just I was the damage sponge here. <laughs> so yeah, so I guess congratulations to the Yui Gaku Girls Group number two as they moved to two and zero. The only undefeated team. I had uh, no, probably not. I doubt it. Um. And then, uh, of course, the Mew Second Gears move to 1 and 1. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed these battles. Of course, I'm going to try continuing these weekly. I know it's only going to get like 200 something views as usual, maybe even less. But at least some people seem to enjoy it a lot, and I think that's what's most important. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and hopefully, I'll catch you guys next week as we'll see if I can go to 3 0. <laughs> Make it have me getting carried even more here. And. We'll see a, how the rest of the girls do, and we'll keep seeing who gets closer to the playoffs and who decides playoffs is not important at all here. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope to catch you guys in another video soon.